We'll be cleaning up after all of you. So, uh, you know, be aware of the trash cans. They're here and there. And if I can ask you one thing, just one favor, please, please don't bring any glasses. <laughs> any more glasses, I should say. Um, something I realized about myself recently is that I am not, I am not good looking enough to be humble. Okay? <laughs> Because if you're a really good-looking guy, okay, uh, well, if you're a really good-looking guy <laughs> and you're nice to a girl, everyone's up in arms, they're like, what a great guy, what a great guy, he could be a total prickter and she would still go for him, but he's chosen to be nicer on his own free will, what a fucking humanitarian this guy is. <laughs> but when I'm nice to a girl, people are like, well, you know, look at you, you have to be. <laughs> I can't even pull off sexual innuendo, women just prefer to take me literally like a Cute waitress will come over and I'm like, oh, I'm doing okay. She, she's like, uh, what were you, uh, she goes, uh, you know what, fuck it, I haven't did that did you joke in a while. You know, I'll move on, I'll move on. There's another part of the joke, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? I have to clean up after you. It doesn't matter to me. I'm in a, I'm in a relationship, I, uh, I got a girlfriend and, uh, she likes me, I think. That's good, uh, I had a girlfriend before her, she left me for her ex-boyfriend, which is painful, painful, but you know, he's in a band, and, uh, and I serve popcorn. I, uh, it's too bad for her, I, I just started like uh, trying to get in shape, you know, trying to doll this up, get ready for her, you know? So that when I unveil it, she's like, oh, where'd you get that stuff? You know? I started jogging. If, if you haven't jogged before and you try to jog, it is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. I don't care how many kids you have. It's difficult, okay? I was jogging through this neighborhood one time, and I saw this beautiful girl, she's jogging towards me. And then I thought to myself, like, oh, maybe I should go jogging more often this way. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll see her again. That's all I thought, just maybe I'll run into her, maybe I'll see a beautiful girl. That's, that's it, you know, nothing nefarious. I don't have a lot of vulgar thoughts. Then I remember reading this article that said, if you're a woman and you jog, you should alternate routes. You know, for safety reasons. I was like, oh my god, they're talking about me. That's me. And apparently I'm on the prowl. I didn't even know that. I forgot about that thought. I went jogging again. I found myself in the same neighborhood. And I got a little panicked. I was like, oh god, I hope she doesn't come. I hope she didn't see me again. She's going to be totally on to me. And I'm going to have to kill her. <laughs> I'm not a problem solver, you know? <laughs> Christmas is coming up. Uh, that's great. I remember, I remember one year when I was a kid. All I wanted for Christmas was a set of walkie-talkies. You guys remember that? That was, that was a long time ago. That's all I wanted, a set of walkie-talkies. And I was a good boy all year long, and I really tried my best. <sighs> Christmas came. It was early in the morning, I ran downstairs. I opened my present, I was so excited, I opened my present. And there they were, my walkie-talkies. And I felt amazing, I felt complete. You know, I didn't want anything else for the next five years, except just one friend. <laughs> yeah. Some batteries would've been nice too. <laughs> Sometimes people, they ask me questions at times, and I'm just not in the mood to hear them. A friend of mine goes, uh, he goes, would you rather be burned alive or drowned to death? And normally, hypothetical questions like that don't scare me, except at the time, we were having a bonfire on a boat. <laughs> He's got a lot of questions like that, you know, at this point, if you can only take two things to an island, what two things would you take with you? I try to get out of questions like that, you know, I'm like, I don't know, I take a boat. And he's like, well, you can't take a boat, that's against the rules. I'm like, fine, I'll take a banana. He's like, why would you take a banana? I don't know, why are we friends? I'll tell you what I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take you. And if I did, the next thing I'd take is my life. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No. thank you. And you? Okay, I'll thank the rest of you on the way out. I got real depressed after uh, my girlfriend 
abandoned my love. And uh, I was, sometimes I, I get depressed and I just walk around downtown. I was walking around downtown one time and I'm just, you know, just feeling bad about myself, you know, like, oh, I'm not good enough. I was kicking at the air, I saw that in a movie once, it doesn't do anything to things. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not tall enough, my dick's too big, all these thoughts. <laughs> And then I see, then I look over and I see this homeless guy in a wheelchair. He's got a big smile on his face, and then I think to myself, what am I, what am I complaining about, you know? My life ain't so bad. My life ain't so bad. I got nothing to complain about, you know? And then I realize that, that I'm that guy to somebody else. Somebody else is looking at me and thinking the same thing, you know? <laughs> and it's probably that guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> He's looking at me and he's thinking to himself, well, I wish I could walk, but at least I'm not the kind of person who looks at disabled people and feels better about themselves. Wow. I like to go, uh, I like to, I just got into camping this year. You guys like camping? I, I, love, I love, I love it. I love camping. It's my new favorite thing. I, I, I'm a camper. I love camping. I've, uh, I've never actually went real camping, I went to like, uh, I went to like a campground where there's like outlets and RVs and alcoholics everywhere. I always wanted to go camping where you, you put on that pack, it's got the frame in it, you know, you fill it with nuts and jerky, I don't eat meat, but I take the jerky anyways just to fulfill the fantasy, you know, and water, and you say things like, oh, we'll set up here for the night and we'll move out in the morning, you know, things like that, just manly things, you know. But I worry because Somebody told me that if you go camping, you need to put your food way high up in the trees so that the bears don't get it. Now, I don't understand that because it doesn't make sense. If, if all the food's way up in the trees, it would seem to me that the most convenient thing to eat is then you. Right? <laughs> I think a better idea is you leave so much food out, the bear gets full, doesn't eat you, right? <laughs> Or, or maybe just one big steak, you put a roofie in it, you wake up, it's picture time. You, know? you put your head in the bear's mouth, you know, you stand over with a stick, you know, you get behind it like you, any kind of picture you want to take. You, just, you have all the fun, the bear's out, you can do whatever you want. One thing when I, uh, I moved to Sacramento, one of the places I lived was a place called, the beautiful neighborhood, it's called Del Paso Heights. And, uh, yeah. right. Sounds like yeah. we have criminals here. Uh, a legend. I uh, I moved there. I saw something I'd never seen before. They had this sort of roadside memorial. Uh, I uh, you know I asked my friend about it, and uh, he said, well, you know, people will pass away there, and other people will leave things there that meant something to them. And I never I, I was shocked. I didn't know you could do that. And you just leave things that you know. I was like. There's things I don't want to get rid of. <laughs> now no one can stop me. You know? They can try, they can go, hey, you can't leave that there. I'm, like, I'm sorry, you don't understand, my brother, he died here. And that was his favorite microwave. <laughs> the box spring, the box spring was like a father to us. <laughs> I, um... I was walking down, uh, I was walking downtown one time, I'm hanging out with this girl. I don't know why I was hanging out with her, I was just hanging out with this girl, we were walking along. And across the street there's this other girl and she had a dress on, and the girl I was with says, oh, look at her, what a slut. And I said, uh, do you know her? Why do you say that? She goes, well look at her, you know, look at what she's wearing. And I go, well, what's wrong with what she's wearing? She goes, well, She's sending guys the wrong message. The personality, the mind, is the most important part of someone. She's sending guys the wrong message. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know her. You, you don't know her. We don't know anything about her. She could be a wonderful, compassionate, empathetic, altruistic person. We don't know. We don't know. All we know is that you're judgmental. And, <laughs> and according to you, maybe you should start dressing differently because I feel like you're sending guys the wrong message, making them think you've got a good personality. <laughs> 
just a judgmental bitch. And you're a judgmental bee. Uh, I think I gotta get out of here. Let me tell you this last thing. When I was uh, when I was a little kid, I uh, when I was a little kid, I uh, I was kind of a, a, a weird. I didn't start speaking until I was about six years old, and uh, up until then, I would just sort of look at the ground and I would huddle against my mother's hip like that, and I would mumble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was afraid of everything. I was afraid of looking up. I was afraid of everything. I would just mumble. Mm -hmm. It was my birthday, and she took me to the bakery to get a cake. And we went to the counter, and the uh, the baker said to me, uh, hey, hey, little buddy, hey, little, I forget what he said exactly, but hey, little kid, what do, you want, what do you want in a cake? What do you like? Now, at the time, like I said, I was still at the ground. I wasn't really aware of anything else in life, just the ground and this one movie. I saw this one movie, and I liked the movie. It was called Voyage of the Rock Alien. You've never seen it, probably. Don't look it up. It's a waste of time. But... I loved the movie, it had everything I liked in it, you know, it had aliens and science and, and music, and so he said, what do you like? So I just started t telling him, you know, the best I could, like, there's a girl, there's a girl, and then they had a lot of fun, and they play music, rock, rock and roll, and then they had aliens, and then they went to a party, and they, got, they got all friends, and they like, uh, they had a lot of, you know, because I'm describing the whole movie to him. I was like, what do you like? But yeah, put that on my cake. I didn't know they couldn't do that. You know? like, put the whole movie on my cake. And I finally finished mumbling. And I swear to God, this is true. Uh, the baker looked at me, and he was clearly unnerved. And he goes, so like a lion? <laughs> A lion. I was. I didn't. I didn't like lions. I liked space rock. You know. I was. I was a little weird kid. I, I was nothing like a lion. You know. Now I'm a lot like a lion. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the ladies. I tend to go for the sick ones, the weak ones. The ones who were hurt by previous attacks. Okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna do this last thing just because I love doing this. I've been thinking about my own demise a lot, you know, uh, when I die. And I think it's important to have good last words, okay? And I've decided on my last words, and uh, I think they're pretty good. And, you know, you can use them in your own life if you want, but I'll be dead. So these will be my last words if all goes as planned in my life, okay? Yeah, because I'm going to die a hero. Thank you. <laughs>